So today we're going to be talking about the Martin Triple O RS1. Okay, how are you all doing? How's things? Uh, today is an exciting day. I get to uh, talk about guitars once again. Um, I know these have been a bit guitar heavy lately, some of these vlogs. That's due to the fact that I've been in a situation that I, I really had to look at the guitars a lot because I was in the market for a new guitar. Um, my old trusty Musima, um, as you know, it's, it's in need of a bit of loving and care and a bit of maintenance and uh, it just got to the point that I couldn't, it needs a bigger job done to it, so I would need to give it away for a more substantial amount of time uh, to get it fixed properly and to get it, give it a, the chance of life that it deserves. The other thing is that it is such an amazing sounding guitar. A little part of me is a little bit worried that it's gonna, I'm gonna just wear it down, so <laughs> I know guitars need to be played and they deserve to be played. Uh, and don't you worry, this the museum still will get played, but uh, maybe its job will be more towards recording than live performance uh, in the future. It's just that uh, uh, I still would like to see that guitar being around f a long time from today. So, um, yesterday I finally found um, a guitar that I think I made friends with. I think any acoustic guitar player, somewhere in their life comes a time that they need to get their own Martin. And uh, this is my very first Martin. So today we're going to be talking about the Martin Triple O RS1. Um, and I suppose you could add E at the end of that code as well, due to the fact that it does have a Fishman Sonatone um, pickup built into it as well. The model I'm holding here, which is the baby I found, um, in the Goodwins music shop here in Dublin, um, after trying a few different ones in a few different shops, this was the one. Um, how does this differ from any of the other ones? It's the fact that this is a 2015 model. Um, I just said it's left the factory somewhere in the 2015. Um, due to that fact, the Sonatone pickup system goes the old way with the, uh, uh, the plug in the, the strap holder. Uh, whereas the new ones have actually a bit, bit of chunk of wood taken out with a replaced with a bit of plastic thing which has a jack input, a battery input and also has a USB connection for you to connect it directly to your guitar or to your computer. Anybody who knows anything about me and my recording process know that's that's not the way I, I record. There'll be a couple of good quality microphones in front of this baby when I record. Um, search for a guitar, um, due to the fact that I was sp so spoiled with the Musima, um, there's a couple of things I look for, it's, it's, it, obviously it's the, how the neck feels because you're going to be spending a lot of time on this, holding onto this neck and uh, if it doesn't feel right it's hard to make friends with it. I've had, to, I've had some amazing guitars over the years that the neck just wasn't fitting my hand. This I was actually super, super, very very surprised how well it fits. Um, the other thing is how the guitar resonates and that's, you know. <laughs> I can feel the guitar resonating. And the tone just goes on. So what's so special about this guitar? Why did I go for this guitar? My number one um, decision while I was this time when I was looking for a guitar was that it would have to come from the wood would have to come from a renewable source. Um, I didn't want to go for guitars that we're already putting more damage into the environment uh, where some of the tone woods of the guitars have been they run basically running out of, you know they like something like Brazilian rosewood is a 
it, it's endangered species right now. Like it's that's how far it's gone. Now I'm not saying guitars. Yeah, even though that they use quite a lot of wood, um, it's still guitar manufacturing. It's nothing compared to other places where it's been used, like furniture manufacturing and, and and other stuff like that. So I don't think the guitars are guitars are part of the problem. They're not the main main reason behind the, the wood being disappearing. So I thought I personally feel that it's time to kind of us musicians be more conscious of where our guitars come from, where the wood in our guitars come come from. The other thing is mahogany is running low, but the beauty of mahogany is that there's such a great replacements for it. Like this is um, sapeli, which is um, um, West African tone wood, which there is a, it's just, there's a number one. There's a huge supply of it. Number two, it's very very renewable. It, it grows in plenty. It is very hard, um, which makes it very durable. Uh, which I I really like that because my guitars get they get around a lot so. Fingerboard and the bridge is a material called Rich Light, which is um, it is a man-made product. It's very um, dense. It's I'm actually not an expert on it. I've heard things that people say that it is actually paper-based product, um, which is again from wood, um, but it's compressed so hard that it, it's become very very um, hard. It reminds me a lot of uh, the, even the feel of it. If it feels a lot like uh, ebony fingerboards, ebony is a complicated wood. Um, again, ebony is a, you know it it will be running low, um, but ebony also it reacts to temperatures and and the moisture, especially the moisture and temperatures a lot. And very often, ebony guitars you get the the frets start coming out of the air because the the, the neck dries out. Um, Ebony definitely needs a little bit of care, loving and care for the fingerboard, but uh, also um, um, if there is another option, um, I, I, I'm very willing to try it out. And this this is, and apparently it's even harder than Ebony, so... Personally, if you would have given this to me and I didn't know about that, I probably would find it hard to even notice the fact that it wasn't... Um, Ebony. Yeah, it does feel a lot like ebony. So what else we can say about this guitar? This guitar is the classic Martins, uh, a triple O size, uh, 14 frets to the body joint. This model's the shape of guitar has been around for a very, very, very long time. I'm saying in excess of 100 years at this point, I'd say. Um, I, I'm not an expert, but that's what I'm guessing. The mahogany ones are the ones that I that always appeal to me. Something about the color of it. Something about the uh, it's like the ultimate blues machine. The vintage versions of these go for a very a huge amount of money. There's a couple in Dublin, been bouncing around. Uh, these and then the double O's, which is even a little bit smaller body, um, and they were going for somewhere in the region of four thousand. Uh, so give you an idea. So to me, I, I like it because it has kind of that vintage look, but at the same time, it does have the the modern playability that I need because I'm a professional musician. You know, I, I need to have an instrument that stays in tune, has a clear tone. Yeah, this is so far. I'm very impressed. Um, as a standard, um, good solid tuners there. Um, the Triple O fifteen, which is kind of the other version of this, or the, the the more upper scale version of this guitar, which often have some sort of mahogany, um, which I'm not even sure what kind of mahogany that is anymore these days. They have open back tuners, which do look deadly. So uh, I don't know, maybe I maybe I trade trade those in some states for our open back tuners just for the look of it. The other thing about this guitar that needs to be mentioned that this is made in Martin's Mexican factory. Which is, I believe, it's like two two hundred miles down the border in a community where they first started making the Martin strings, and then they went to the backpacker guitars, and since then they started doing the X series and now the road series guitars. Personally, for me, I know a lot of people go very passionate about the American made guitars. Well, I'm from Europe anyway, so it doesn't matter that much. Like my one of my guitars is made in Germany. I do understand that there's a strong tradition of building guitars in America and. Uh, the craftsmanship at the top level is very very high having said that martin has trained their staff 
uh, in Mexico very very well and there's a lot of uh, the actual stuff from their Nazareth uh, factory going over there all the time anyway so uh, the quality of this instrument is amazing like I have no doubt about that people say that there's you know they're not as good um, I put this against the triple of 15 um, personally I like the neck of this one better and I'll talk about that in a little bit more in a minute I think this is equally good instruments it in the sense of I know the specs won't add up but it this one resonates I tried a few other ones of these which they did resonate but they, they will felt a little bit choked up on the bottom end which I'm sure would fix over time uh, by uh, you play it a lot it opens up more the tone would become more richer but this one already maybe it's the fact that it's, it, it was it's, it's been a shop and probably tried by a lot of people already uh, it had a little bit of play time uh, but this one is very open all across the board and when the starting point is that I can only eagerly wait what this guitar matures into the things that people are worried about this guitar because it's made in Mexico, because it, it has the bridge light, bridge and, and fingerboard, they're the things that actually appeal to me. Weirdly enough, you know, I'm, I'm all for uh, Martin bringing their expertise to a factory just not too far from the, the US border into Mexico where they do need more sustainable work. And I think that kind of action will definitely have a bigger effect on the, uh, the immigration in, situation in America than any wall than anybody's gonna build and so kudos to Martin for that and I'm really happy to support that cause I don't feel I got in any way in inferior guitar because of that I think it this is fantastic instrument and um, I literally bought this yesterday and within 15 minutes for me walking out of the shop I was playing this guitar in a porthouse in a session so And now I know because I'm, I'm excited about it. It's it's my new baby. Um, I'll be playing this, you know, seven days a week for the, probably the next well, unforeseeable future. Probably probably about for the next six months or so, apart from maybe occasional holidays. But guitars are made to be played. That's my uh, mentality. And as long as I want to grab it and play it, it's doing something right. What else? The the reason why the neck on this one appealed to me more is because I needed a kind of chunkier neck. This is not necessarily thicker in in this way, but what it, it is that the nut width is a little bit wider than it is on the triple uh, of fifteen, uh, and it does feel a bit chunkier. It feels like something something more to hold on to, and I really like the neck on this one, um, and I think I will make good friends with it over time. Um, It has A-frame X1 bracing, and I don't know too much about it, except that, you know, A-frame, there's bracing that kind of spells out A there inside of an X as well. It is very resonant guitar, and so I, I believe Martin's done an awesome job on that one. Um, I can see the inside, the braces are kind of rounded up a little bit. Um, Definitely thinner than the ones I would have in my museum, which I've actually gone and thinned myself. The scale length is 25.4 inches. Uh, it is the longer of the two most common scale lengths. The other one is the Gibson one, which is a little bit shorter. Martin even has the OM, which is even a tiny bit longer scale again. But this is, this would definitely be the more, more common uh, scale. And tonight it's a balance between um, brightness and, uh, and the bassiness. The, the Gibson scale, which is shorter, there's definitely a, um, there's a it, it does lack a little bit of the, the, the top end ring because of the scale length, but then Gibson compensates on the other parts of the amazing construction that they do on their guitars. The Gibson's have a very different kind of growl bottom end, but this, this baby barks as well. I'm, I'm really happy with the, the way the bottom end of this one sounds. 
And again, as I said, I'm only looking forward to seeing what it's going to turn out inside. The neck joint is the so-called mortis tenon neck joint. People get very passionate about these things as well. I've tried so many different guitars by now, so I, I've uh, I've my own opinion about this. There's a dovetail neck joint where the the wood is cut into kind of a kind of a, like a, almost like a V shape inside there, and so so that it slots into it and. Um, that kind of keeps it in place and then it's glued in. Ideally, you can use the hide glue, uh, which is the animal based glue, if, uh, if, if possible. That's the preferred, which has been used in music instruments for decades. That's been the, uh, uh, the steady glue. And usually, if, if it's been used in construction, you smell it off the guitar straight away. Um, the Gibsons are still done, done that way. This one is more just neck joint, where the, the, the wedge, which was the V in the other shape, is actually straight, like more like a U shape. And then there is one screw that goes through the body. Um, the margins up here under um, kind of a plate, a wooden plate, and I believe it's underneath. There's a there's a, there's a little screw that connects the the neck and the body. Um, people get pressed about that, that you shouldn't put that screw in there. I think it's well. First of all, if, if you need ever get need to get the neck readjusted, it makes it much much easier for the luthier. It's, I don't think it's about so much about that screw doing this job. It's it's about that joint being solid anyway. And I did do a little bit of reading on those, those that there hasn't been any proven benefits one way or the other in the, in the construction of it. I think that obviously some guitar companies have to think about their costs, but at the same time, I, I think uh, my personal experience is that I've tried both kind of guitars and I, I don't hear any difference that I would put it down to the actual neck joint. Simple as that. Uh, I've seen guitars with dovetail joints that don't resonate uh, and I've seen guitars with uh, this kind of joints like this one which do resonate like crazy so I leave it up to you to decide if, if the prestige of having the old school way of doing it uh, is that important for you go for it. Um, you will probably pay a little bit extra for that but um, for me this works absolutely perfectly. Yeah, the neck is called modified low oval. It's it's nice. I was talking to the uh, the owner of the Goodwin's Music, saying about that. Uh, my problem is that these days, too many acoustic guitar companies are trying to make their necks feel like electric guitar necks. I don't. I don't like that. I think they're two different instruments. I like something hearty to hold on to. But even at electric, so, you know, my Telecaster has a pretty chunky neck. So yeah, there's no binding on it, which is actually something I really, really like. There's nothing worse than kind of plasticky looking binding, I think. Uh, it just doesn't appeal to me at all. The museum I have has actually wooden binding, which is really, really nice. But uh, yeah, no, I, I really like the simplicity of this guitar. As I said, it really looks like a, an old blues machine. Uh, the construction of it is absolutely beautiful. Uh, the fact that it doesn't have a binding um, works well with the Sapelli because it, it is a harder wood, so I don't, I don't think that's going to be any difference in, in if it gets knocks or not. Um, it, the sapelli is hard enough for to take the knocks. Uh, the neck on this, it, uh, as far as I know, it, the material keeps on changing w depending on uh, what's available. Um, but they're all kind of mahogany related f family of trees from a renewable source obviously. Um. And here's the thing, people people get very precious about the, the you know the, the true mahogany. Um, it's, there's actually very few true, uh, instrument makers that use the, the original South American mahogany anymore because it is so scarce uh, and it's only a matter of time it's going to be gone and I, I think it's ridiculous that we have to wait until it gets to that point but I think instrument makers uh, like Martin who are, who are going for a different tone woods uh, and Taylor's done a great job on that over the years as well and now recently, recently Gibson has come up with the J15 which is, I think is a great step towards that same thing um, I think we need to support these instrument makers. And then people like uh, George Loudon in the here in, in the nor Northern Ireland, who's been making absolutely stunningly amazing guitars for years, uh, well out of my price range and uh, well out of my um, uh, budget. He's been pushing and been experimenting with a lot, lot of different tone woods over the years and. Uh, has had some really great success on them, so 
I think I think we need to widen our spectrums a little bit about the tone boards as well. But what I can say right now is that I've been holding a guitar made out of Sapelli, and if this is this is how good good uh, instruments they they make out of with a quality of craftsmanship, I'm happy to work with Sapelli. This is uh, and it just it looks it looks stunning. It looks beautiful. Uh, this particular one is a little bit lighter color than the, the ones that the other ones I've, I've tried out, but uh, yeah, it's still absolutely love it. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of songs this guitar hides as well. That's the ultimate test. So that's enough about that. I've kind of just been talking about the uh, technical parts of it. I, I will be including loads more videos um, in, in the next few weeks. I will go through all the details of it. I want to show you guys how the pickup sounds like. I want to show you what it sounds like in an acoustic environment, um, but I'll probably do that by just recording songs and playing you songs live here, so that gives you a better idea of it. Um, what else? Uh, Tusk Saddle. Um, I've I've kind of made friends with Tusk. I think I think Tusk uh, makes a nice enough stuff. Uh, the um, the knot is white Korean, which is I don't know what that is. We shall see whether we change that into actual bone. But uh, for now, it seems to be a good connection, it seems to be resonating lovely. It comes with Martin's 12s, which are not my preferred strings, my preferred strings are 13s. So the next thing is going to be, I'm going to be putting a new set of strings and we're going to see what it sounds like. But for now, this is the Martin um, 000 RS1 2015 model. Um, I highly recommend you go and check out one of these guitars if you're in a budget but looking for a high-end guitar and you won't go wrong with any of these. They also have a few other models in the same range. They do have a dreadnought size as well. Um, so whatever suits you, go and check them out. Highly recommend it. But as I said, what suits me might not suit you, so it's up to you. As that's why I keep on saying that you're gonna go. You gotta go into the shop and test it yourself. Anyway, thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on those notifications. Let me know in the comments what you think of the guitar. Have you tried one of them? Do you have experiences of them? Have you any thoughts on what we should do about the uh, the wood? Are you still believing that the the real only real guitars are made out of rosewood and spruce tops, or or do you think uh, it's time to look at the more renewable source of wood? Um, let me know in the comments, and I shall talk to you guys soon.